Tony. Welcome to SoSo -So Lounge. Today we're talking about stitches. Now when you buy your first machine, you're probably thinking like, oh, what machine should I get? How many stitches do I need? And today, regardless of the price of your machine, even the cheapest machines are gonna come with like 25 to 27 stitches. My brother, which is sitting behind me, um, was about $100 on Amazon and it's got 26 different stitches plus a buttonhole function. So it's very manual. It's one of the cheapest machines you can buy. It's got a ton of stitches. Now here's the thing. And this is kind of a well-kept secret. You're only going to use two stitches. Pretty much all the time, that's what you're going to use. You're going to use a straight stitch and you're going to use a zigzag stitch. And today I'm going to show you how you can change the length of your straight stitch to uh, use it for different things, to sew different types of things. And then I'm going to show you how you can change the length and the width of your zigzag stitch so that you can just sew a variety of things. To get started, um, you're going to need some squares or rectangles of fabric. Um, these are about, I think these were about seven by four and three quarters. These were some leftover mask blanks that I found in my scrap box. Uh, so if you've got any of those lying around, just um, grab some or cut out some rectangles, fold them in half, cut them in half so you've got two strips. And that's what we're going to be working with today. I've got a couple of different colors and I'm going to be sewing in white thread so that it's easy for you to see what I'm doing. So let's get started. We're going to go over to the machine. So before you start, make sure that your machine is threaded. If you don't know how to thread your machine, I've made two other videos on how to thread your machine with a drop-in top load bobbin or a front load bobbin. So just go check those out and then come back to this part of the video. So to start, I just want to take note that the tension on this machine is set to a four. The um, needle is just set to neutral, which there's like a little ridge here. Um, so it's just staying in the middle. It's just going to do straight stitch. And then um, the stitch length is about two and a half. Now I always sew on two and a half because it's easier to rip out. And even though I've been sewing a long time, I still make mistakes. And if I'm going to rip, I want to be able to do it faster. Smaller stitches are harder to rip out. So if you've sewed it like a one and a half, take you a lot longer to rip that out than a two and a half. You're welcome to sew in a three, but two and a half is pretty good. It's enough to hold your seam together, but still be easy to rip out if you have to. Take note, uh, most of these brother machines have these dials or they have a little bit more of an automatic looking setting. We are starting with a straight stitch, which is number two. So if you have the dial type machine, make sure it is set to two because that's, that's what we're working with. Um, I think the machines come pretty standard set on two to start with to avoid confusion. But if yours isn't, make sure it is. Now we're gonna start out with a straight stitch, two and a half, uh, just straight and Let's get started. Seam allowances on commercial patterns are sewn at 5 eighths of an inch unless otherwise indicated. So find the 5 eighths mark on your machine. Brother actually does a really good job and labels all the different lines so you don't have to measure them every time. So this is the 5 eighths inch mark and I colored it in with Sharpie so I could see it a little bit better. That's the line we're going to be using for our fabric. What you're going to do is take your fabric and you're going to put it a little bit behind the needle. It doesn't have to be a whole lot, just a, just a couple stitches behind the needle. And then you're going to lower your presser foot. And you want to take out this pin. Apply some pressure to your foot pedal and start sewing a couple of stitches. Okay, so that's like three. And then you're going to use your reverse lever to go back up to the top of the edge of the fabric. And the reason you're doing this is to um, finish the seam so that the end of the seam is enclosed. But also by starting um, with the fabric a little bit behind the needle and then back stitching to the end, you're preventing the fabric snarl or the rat's nest that'll show up on the bottom of your fabric when the, the thread all gets caught up in itself. Keep sewing. And then when you get towards 
towards the other end, you also want to backstitch there. So use your backstitch lever. And then go forward again. And once you get to the end, you don't really want to sew any stitches off of the fabric because that's going to cause tension problems. So roll your needle forward by hand and then lift it back up. And you're going to lift that presser foot, cut off your thread tail if you have a cutter or some scissors. And then take a look. We've got a nice straight stitch that is finished on both ends. Yay! Now we're going to move on to basting stitches. Now you may be thinking, what's a basting stitch? Basting stitch is still a straight stitch, but it's a really long straight stitch. So to make a basting stitch, you want to turn your length dial to the highest setting possible. On this brother, it's a four, but on my Bernina, it's a five. Whatever your machine has, just make sure it's the longest stitch length available. Now you may be wondering, what do I use basting for? Basting is really great to use when you are fitting a garment. So for example, you don't want to sew the whole thing and then have to go rip it out and make alterations. You want to just put it together quickly and then be able to easily take out those seams um, if you need to make adjustments in you know, the width or the fit or anything like that. So that's one use of basting. The other use of basting is to put sleeves into armholes. Um, sleeve patterns are flat. Um, once you make the bodice part of the shirt and it's got that round hole, you've got to put that flat pattern piece into the round hole. And to do that, you do a stitch line of basting stitches. You actually do two, but we'll get into that later. Um, and then you can gather that um, curve to make it rounder and then fit it into the armhole of the shirt you're making. So those are two examples. Um, that's probably the most common ways you would use basting. And let's go over to the machine and I'm going to show you basting stitches. Start. <laughs> okay, for this example, I'm going to sew a double row of basting stitches like we would do if we were making a, uh, putting in a sleeve. So to start, I'm gonna sew the first row with the edge of the, um, presser foot because that's going to be easy to follow. So line up the fabric like we did before um, with the um, back of the fabric a little bit behind the needle. It's not going to matter so much because we're not going to backstitch when we baste. You don't want a permanent stitch. You just want to be able to um, gather it if you need to or just hold it together temporarily. Then put some pressure on your foot pedal and start sewing. And then roll up that last stitch. Raise your presser foot. And that is the first line of basting stitches. You can see how they're a lot bigger than our regular straight stitch. So the regular straight stitch is down here, and that's the basting stitch. Now we're going to go sew a second line of basting stitches. So this time we're going to put it on the um, 5 eighths mark. Lower the presser foot. And we're going to stitch again. two rows of basting stitches here. Here is the fun part. If you're going to use this, let's say this is the part of an arm for a sleeve, you want to take, you want to leave these tails long first of all. You want to have your thread tails nice and long because you're going to grab them. You're going to take the bottom ones which are from the bobbin thread. Those are the ones you're going to pull and you're going to gather the fabric. See how that works? So this is a very tight gather, um, but it's just to kind of show you what's going on here. And that's how you would get it to curve, because you can see how once you do that, then it's easier to have a curved seam. Of 
course, this fabric would ideally be on a curve and not a straight line, but you get the idea. And once we get to putting in sleeves, we'll go into this in a lot more detail. Just want to show you what's happening. And there. Another way to use a straight stitch is to use it for edge stitching or top stitching. They're both very similar to each other. Top stitching is more of a decorative stitch, like think about a detail on a pocket, like that extra stitch row that you can see that's not really holding anything together or holding the pocket on, it's just kind of for looks. Um, or you can do it on the edge of a seam to reinforce the, um, the seam itself. So for example, if you look at your jeans that you have on, um, if on the inside seam of them, that's on the inside of your leg, there's probably an edge stitch on top of that, which is going to be a different color from the regular seam. And that's just holding the, um, the back of the seam um, to one side. It also makes it more comfortable. So to get started, I just sewed the regular straight stitch. And then what I did is I folded both of the, instead of having an open seam allowance like that, I folded them both to one side and I pressed it. So that's going to hold them in place. And then I'm going to show you how to edge stitch this seam. Just as you'd expect, edge stitching is along the edge. So as we were talking about, you can see here that the um, inside part of the seam is folded to one side. And then that's the side we're going to be stitching on. So we're going to be putting the edge stitching in next to our original seam line, but it's gonna be on this side of the seam so that it holds these pieces all to one side. Now we want it to be pretty close. So what we're gonna do is line the edge of the original seam next to the edge of the presser foot. And the distance between that and the needle is a quarter of an inch. And that's pretty standard on most machines. So just keep that in mind. If yours looks a little bit bigger or smaller, just double check. So we wanna line up the outside pre-sewn seam and then lower your presser foot. Apply some pressure to your foot pedal and start sewing. see how we've got the original seam line here and there we go it's a little bit better and then our edge stitch line and then if you flip your fabric over you can see that these seam allowances is are being held in place to one side and that's going to make this seam more comfortable um, if it was on the inside of your pants for example like jeans Now you know how to make a straight stitch and how to adjust your machine so you can use it in different ways. Of course, there are many more uses for the straight stitch in various parts of your garment, but I didn't want to overwhelm you, so we just stuck to a few. Be sure to tune in next week for part two of Stitches, which is all about the zigzag stitch. This video was getting a little long, so I decided to cut it off with straight stitches. We'll go to next week for part two, zigzag stitches. In the meantime, if you've got questions and no answers, head down to the description below and click on our link to join our Facebook group, Let's Talk Sewing for Beginners, hosted by Sew Sew Lounge. I do a live Q&A every Wednesday, and you can ask all the questions you want and actually get answers. Until then, happy sewing.